What you are listening to is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in the squared circle. Both parties have agreed to dismiss their cases and have their disputes settled here in our forum, The Turnbuckle Debate. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Turn Buckle Debate. My name is Sneed. I'm Chad. I'm Tom, the OG Fit Kid, the staple of the Turn Buckle Debate. And our guest returning to hang out with this man. It's been a while. Austin from Pro Wrestling Central over on Twitter. What's going on, man? How are we doing, fellas? Honored to be back. I love the, the debates. My uh, Monday morning gets me going, gets the week started off right. So happy to be back. Happy to have you back, man. Um, I hear you almost you went to a state championship, right? Very close. We went went to the state title game, got to coach in Navy Stadium in Annapolis. It was an experience of a life, uh, lifetime, but we played Dunbar, who's a Baltimore powerhouse, and it was 14-13 with two minutes left. We threw a pick six, but kids battled their ass off, and uh, we're a very young team, so we're, we're already having aspirations to, to get back there next year, so – that's yeah, awesome, but, dude. Yeah, it was an experience of a lifetime. A lot of time, like that has. I've still been following wrestling, but it kind of. I mean, if you coach football, it's a seven day a week gig. So, um, but it was an amazing experience. So, yeah. I bet those kids. You know that stuff. Those kids will carry with them the rest of their life. Oh man, and it was so cool. Like Navy Stadium, such a historical like landmark. Um, so it was cool, and our RAD said, like, before the game, he's like, just make sure you go out there, like, pregame and just soak it in because not many people get to do this. So, I mean, it's it's the perfect venue for a high school football state championship. And like I said, we're hoping to get back there. Uh, we're re- the next two years, we should be really, really good. We have a lot of uh, sophomores and freshmen actually contribute to this year's state title run. So that's awesome. got a good group of guys, yeah. So excited. Nice, man. Now you get a little more time to listen to us and, and join us live on our stream. Well, to be fair, I always listen to you guys, but yes, I can join you more. <laughs> I, always, I always love to show you guys love because I know the grind. I mean, you guys do this literally seven days of content. So I want to personally thank you guys. And I know how hard that is. And especially with your guys' everyday jobs and stuff, man. I mean, I give you guys credit, but just know. I'm always following along, laughing my ass off at Hawk and listening to the You made me listen to myself. <laughs> yes. I know. We did. We did listen. We were in the car together, and I made Tom listen to himself. <laughs> <laughs> People usually hate that. And probably Monday when this airs, I'll probably hate listening to it on the way there. But guess what? I'm just <laughs> do it. Yeah. We yeah. appreciate it, man. Go ahead and yeah. say what's up to your Monday morning self, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey. hey, Austin. Hope you're awake. all right man well we got three new topics to get into you guys want to get into it let's go let's do it it. let's go all right first topic of the evening what is bigger for professional wrestling sasha banks in new japan pro wrestling or aew Man, when I first saw this question, I thought to myself, oh, without a doubt, AEW. And then I've been simmering and thinking about it. It might be New Japan. If, if she's at Wrestle Kingdom and they really have wrestlers from WWE, from AEW, New Japan, and they had Sasha Banks, like what an amazing, this might be the biggest card of all time. <laughs> if you get Kenny Omega, Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, Carl Anderson, all on the same card with Sasha Banks. How crazy is this? Not to mention all the New Japan stars who've been, you know, mismatching with AEW. Like, like it, it's out of this world. This is this is truly like the, the biggest Forbidden Door Supercard show we've ever seen, if it goes down what we're hearing right now. Yeah, I mean, I, and I see that point. Um, but what's, you know, for me, I think it's what's better long term. Um, you know, if I'm thinking uh, about where she's going to, hold more value or what's bigger for professional wrestling. 
you know, it, it is big to have her on a new Japan show with everybody that, that you just mentioned, Tom. Um, but I think long-term I, I'm going to have to say AEW, man, they have yet to have that really, really big star show up somebody that's in the prime of their career. Um, you know, cause there's been big, um, there's been big people show up, you know, there's been big reveals. We've had sting, you know, um, out, outside of Moxley though, I can't think of somebody that is in the prime of their career who would make a bigger splash in AEW or in professional wrestling and would have a bigger impact on the division than Sasha Banks in AEW. Yeah. I, I got to, uh, with new Japan, man, wrestle kingdom, one off then what big show yeah. everyone's on the card man there's a lot of people on the card then what i can't find new J- it's so hard to follow new japan yeah, that's a good point too. it's hard even with new japan world like say she signs a three-year contract with new japan dude if she would sign a two to three year contract with new japan just say it would happen I would be extremely disappointed because it's so hard to follow the product. It She wouldn't. I know there is hardcore wrestling fans that love new Japan. I like new Japan, but as far as like pro wrestling in general, most wrestling fans, I feel like she would just become out of sight, out of mind. She would be that person that you would see the big moments pop up in the news. But as far as like the, following along weekly of Sasha Banks, I feel like she would be off the radar of a lot of American fans. Um, yeah. AEW, she's going to consistently be on your TV. I think, I think Sasha Banks coming to AEW would be the biggest signing they've ever would, would be the biggest impact they've ever had. Moxley, and she has a fan base of people, of supporters that follow her. I don't know if you've been on Twitter and upset a Sasha Banks fan, uh, fan but they, they come out of the woodwork to attack you. <laughs> they are diehard as it gets. And I think they're, they're, it's a fan base that, for the most part, I think they will follow her. I think if she showed up in AEW, it would be massive. I, I think she would be the first person to truly make a splash with the ratings. I know when punk or P- punk obviously helped with ratings, but it wasn't like this significant, like, man, he brought 500,000 extra viewers a week. He didn't. I mean, look at the numbers. He, he really did. not Yeah. Um, but with Sasha banks, man, uh, like, okay, we got Soraya, but she that's one of those weird situations where we hadn't seen her wrestle for five years. So it's not like she's coming in off the height of, of her popularity. This is, this is the equivalent of Moxley coming over a big in your prime. And people can say, Oh, the biggest women signing dude, she's the biggest signing they could probably have. If Tony Khan signs Sasha Banks, I agree. It would be huge news in the wrestling world. So I gotta say bigger for wrestling Sasha Banks and AEW. Yeah, I mean, me initially, I'm a huge Sasha Banks mark. Um, my fiance actually gets kind of jealous when I talk about her because <laughs> I love her. Um, I think it's big, like just from the lens of professional wrestling as a whole. There were talks I remember of her like not even wanting to come back into wrestling. So I hope that that's not the case, right? There's this is all speculation right now, but I think it's big for wrestling if she signs with either, right? Because there was that scare that she would go to Hollywood and and not even be involved with professional wrestling. Um, But I think it does have a bigger impact if she's wearing AEW, kind of like Chad mentioned, um, she's on your TV every week. You're getting to see her. And to be honest with you, I went to a new Japan show and there was not one women's match. And I don't know how good of promoting they would do um, for their women's division. Like I know AEW recently was under scrutiny with, how they book their division, but realistically, they're starting to pick up wind. They're starting to have little stories, mid-card stories, stories with the world championship, TBS championship, and I think Sasha Banks is by far 
aside from Moxley, like someone joining in their prime, that's huge. And two, you got to look at the terms of, okay, yes, AW is a competitor. Like they talk about the Coke and Pepsi type thing you guys have mentioned before, but think of the terms where Sasha left on with WWE. Like it's, there's heat there, right? She, she did not leave on good terms. So I think it would be a bigger splash for AEW to sign them. And it's kind of an eye opener to WWE fans that she may be able to draw those fans over um, to AEW. So, I mean, I just, I want to see her first. I mean, I know she's going to be at Wrestle Kingdom, but I just was getting nervous because she is a good act- actress. So I didn't want her to just completely abandon pro wrestling. So I hope she's still in it for the long run. So. Now, it, it, with Wrestle Kingdom, is she there in a wrestling role? Or does she have a match? The rumor, <clears throat> the rumor is she she doesn't have a match, but I think Kyrie's saying they're crowning a ch- their first women's champ. Maybe not their first, but th- they're bringing a women's title in, and Kyrie saying is wrestling someone for that. And the rumor is is that Sasha will be on camera. But she's not going to wrestle, and she's possibly going to challenge whoever wins the match. But it, it, from what I've read, it's locked in. She's going to be there, uh, and it's a paid paid by appearance deal. And I think it. I think this is her dipping her toe in in the waters of what's wrestling like outside of WWE. Yeah, I think it's also a little bit of hey let me put myself in a better spot to get a, a bigger contract to stay in WWE. Because if they have the real fear that she's going to leave, they're going to offer her more money. I don't think she's going anywhere. I still think at the end of the day, she winds up back in WWE. I think she's cut from the cloth of one, two of her best friends in WWE or once was in WWE's Dax and Cash. And I think they're cut from the same cloth of sticking up for what they believe in and not just taking the dollar i think anything that triple h offers her tony khan to get someone like her would match it and i think if it comes down to a matching deal i just get this feeling she's wanting to test something out i I think she feels scorned like the way they were treated i think there's a little bad blood there i don't think there's a shot in hell that she comes back to wwe to be honest with you yeah and was she ever truly of the four horsewomen was she ever truly book the best yes she was in no. like she was in like uh like the main event scene but i remember she was winless at wrestlemania for like the first however like six wrestlemanias and if you look at all their title runs between becky lynch bailey <clears throat> charlotte she was always it seemed like the transitional champion and very she was never yep, she never had a legit run in my no, opinion they never let her get the big win in any of the big matches she's never got the win she was always in the first whatever but she never was put over she always put somebody else over if vince was there i would absolutely say there's no chance of her going back there i wonder how much it hurts her seeing that wwe really hasn't changed with triple h in charge for six months where if it was a few months ago and he tried to lock her up you know she had a good relationship with triple h and nxt but now he sees he hasn't really done anything great with any of the divisions he hasn't really changed anything and i wonder if that could play into her decision as well yeah, and also this news with Vince. Vince saying he's going to try, not to say it's going to happen. It's not like he can just snap his fingers and make that happen. Now, the the crazy thing in all of this, he did retire, but he's still the majority stockholder in that company. Yeah, He yep. still holds the majority of the stocks. But even, even I, I don't think that will happen, but just the rumors and the news of Vince saying that, I think could turn off potential people going there like that that don't want to be under Vince in fear that what if he comes back then it's back to the same old shit hey, Tom, you see when he when those lines came out what he said the stock instantly dropped after those comments leaked to him saying he wanted to come back so yeah Tom I want to know you said that you think at the end of the day that she doesn't go to AEW or New Japan you think she shows that she's in WWE why just a gut feeling I don't really have anything to back. You know, sometimes you get that gut feeling. I think she's going to wind up back there. So I'd rather see her go to AEW. If I had to choose, I want her in AEW where she's going to be putting great matches with, you know, Britt Baker, with Paige or Soraya. You know, let her, those two want to wrestle each other again. We know they want to wrestle each other again. And Soraya's come out and said it, that they texted about it after she returned from the injury. So 
I mean, there's more opportunities to see her wrestle new people there. What about her and Jamie Hayter? Like, there's so many potential dream matches with her in AEW. She goes back to WWE. It's back to the same core people she's wrestled already. So, Do you think AEW needs her? Because I've heard people say, like, uh oh, why do you need to bring her in? You're you're bu- you're just now building your division. You've got all these homegrown people that are getting heat behind them, like Jamie Hader and uh, Jade and people like that. Britt Baker, obviously. Do you think they need a Sasha Banks, or do you think bringing in someone of her level would take take precious time away from the homegrowns? I don't think they need her, but it sure ain't gonna hurt. Yeah, I mean, she's a ginormous asset i i don't think they need her per se but i look back to wrestlemania um in tampa where she put over um bianca belair and she was just smiling on the apron like that is like after seeing that like she's always like taking the back seat it looks like but i mean i think it'd be huge there's two women's titles right and the tbs title feels very meaningful to me right now i think it would be a huge grab i don't know what would make someone lean towards them like saying that she wouldn't be like a huge splash. I think she's absolutely needed. And I, like you guys said, I think this is like one of the most groundbreaking signings AEW can land. So she should bring so much to the table. <clears throat> I think they absolutely need her. Um, and that's not to take anything away from the, the women's division because I love what they're doing with the women's division. Um, but I do want to see them get a lot more, more attention on the women's division and they're not going to do that. There's nobody in that women's division. That's going to garner any more attention than what they have right now. But if Sasha comes in, everybody's getting a boost. Yeah. It's a slow build. Do they need her? I don't think they need her. It's just, do you want a shot in the arm or do you want to consistently just keep slowly building? You throw her in there Eyes are on the division, right? Out a lot more eyes. I think it's it's malfeasance. It's it's malpractice. If you don't, if there's a person out there like Sasha Banks, I don't give a fuck where she wrestled before. I don't care what company you are. If you're not throwing everything you got to get bring her into your company as an owner, you're a moron. (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I don't get fans that's like, wow, they're bringing in too many WWE people or they're bringing it. Dude, this is a business. They're trying to make money. If you have the opportunity to get a Sasha Banks, you get a Sasha Banks. Dude, it's just it's just like you could naturally build up your muscle or you could take a shot of steroids. You put her in their women division. It's a shot of steroids. You put her and Britt Baker in a pay-per-view. It can main event a pay-per-view. Have her take the title off of Jade. I I know everyone's like people were upset that, that Soraya came in and got that win over Brett. Like Soraya didn't need that win. Soraya didn't need that win. Brett didn't need that win is how I look. Brett is the, yeah, she is the division. She's built that division on her back. I think Soraya coming off a five year injury, I, th- I thought that was huge for this the new the star of your the homegrown star of your company letting you get a win to kind of get that rust knocked off of you. I thought that was smart booking. And to have Jade get taken out by Sasha Banks, I would be all about that. And then maybe start a little feud with them. That yeah. would elevate Jade so much. Like people get so caught up in the loss and Oh, you can't bury dude. Not when you put Jade in the ring with a Sasha Banks, nothing is going to hurt her. It, she's yeah. only going to get that shine. And that'll be her best match. I guarantee it. Just because of yeah. how good oh, yeah. Sasha is in the ring too. So could yeah. you imagine oh, how big that match would be? Oh, you you saw that match on double or nothing Jade versus Sasha Banks for the TBS title. That's must see for me. Yeah. Must yeah. Could you imagine their stare down? Come on. How how much ta- how Jade would tower over her? It'd be the David and Goliath match. And and Sasha's one of the best sellers in the business. Mm-hmm. He sells yeah. so well. So man, I it'd be so much better than Bow Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling so, that I, I think Bow Wow's leading to Sasha that's Banks. The segue, right? Yeah, like you were saying. Yep. 
I think that's that's the segue into Sasha. Sasha Banks is with she's related to Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg's done work with AEW. Bow Wow is Snoop's little protege. Yeah. I just think there's a lot of like foreshadowing there. Why else do you bring in Bow Wow? There can't be another Why? reason. Yeah. Hell out of me. Okay. Else is he it's do? a step towards something. It may not be Sasha Banks, but Bow Wow is just a step towards something. I don't know what that something is, but makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any final thoughts before we move on to our second topic? Nope. All right. We'll move on to the second topic of the evening. Now, Austin, this is the topic that you brought to the table. Is it better to consume professional wrestling in person or from the comfort of your own home? And I'll defer to you to go first on this one. All right. So I think this was, this was something I've been wanting to ask for a long time. So I'm glad it was never a topic talked about. It's um, a good question. Yeah, it's an awesome question. A great question. I think there's pros to each by far. There are pros to each. There are cons to each, but I'm basing mine off of memories and truly remembering like specific moments. Right. So for me, I think it's better to consume wrestling live. It's all about, you get so excited, right? If you're if you know you're going to a show, you truly build excitement. Whereas, okay, you can get excited to watch uh, an episode of Dynamite at home, um, but again, it becomes a weekly thing. So it's so saturated in your brain that you aren't going to remember as many like Dynamite. Like you're going to remember special moments, but you are remembering the whole experience when you go to uh, consume wrestling in person. Like I said, me and my buddies, we went to Roadblock. Back in, I think it was like 2017, we literally ordered the nosebleed seats, right? And they ended up cutting that section or using it for <clears throat> a camera angle. So we paid 20 bucks and they upgraded us to row for the first row. So like, wow. I think that, yeah, they upgraded us. We paid like 20 bucks. So I think of that experience, like I can relive that day in my head. Um, but of course, like I have a like big 85 inch TV in my basement now. Do I love watching it? from the comfort of my home, of course. But again, um, even when you're live in person, one thing I hate is you miss some of the segments. That is one thing I, I really hate. Like you, they're just um, rolling it on TV. You're not able to see it, but then the perk of watching it at home is you get to see everything. So me personally, it's a tough answer. I love professional wrestling either way, consuming it, but I think it's better to consume it in person and not to mention the energy and, you literally, I could talk to any wrestling fan in line uh, to get into the venue or to uh, get something from the concession stand or merch stand, and I feel like I've known them my whole life because wrestling fans are the greatest in that in that regard. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's my answer. Is if in if you would have asked me this question eighteen months ago, without a doubt, my answer would have been from home because it wasn't until like eighteen months ago that you guys kind of got the little want in me to start going to these shows We're going out to Chicago to see CM Punk driving down to West Virginia to go sit in a front row and watch dynamite going to my first pay-per-view in Chicago this year, going to grand slam and just recently going to full gear. I used to love watching it on TV, but you know, I experienced moments that would different be in their life. Like the MJF return, like the music for sympathy for a devil coming on when it getting dark in there, like the bone, the chills I got being in person, like it would have been awesome watching it on TV, but, but the experience of being there was totally different that now I'm thinking, Oh my God, revolutions coming up and I'm not going to be there because it's, it's in California to the point that I'm, I'm thinking, I have family in California. All it would really cost me is an airline ticket. <laughs> if I wanted to go, I could just go for a couple of days that like the idea of not going to revolution is starting to bother me. So like, like now I absolutely say without a doubt going to it live because experience what I've experienced live, like sitting in a front row with you guys, that's, there's, there's nothing like that. No. Like, and that was a great dynamite. We had to pull apart right in front of us with punk and mock. Kenny Omega's return. Yeah. Kenny Omega's return, his first match back after being gone for all those months. Like, we, we got to experience, like, we got to feel what was in the air. Like, it was in us. Like, like the electricity. Like, I know they talk about electricity being in the air, but it is. It is. And you don't get, like, you can enjoy it sitting at home. You could pop singing out at home and jump off your couch. But when you're there with each other and you're there with, like, 20 other thousand wrestling fans there ain't nothing like it there's nothing like it and this is a different me than who would have answered this month a couple of years ago 
Yeah. It, so this is a really tough one. Um, if you ask me, so if it's better to consume wrestling, I'm going to say, because I, I'm going to say it's better to consume wrestling at home. Um, I think it's a better experience and you have more memories at live events. Um, it, it's better for the live event. And now as far as consuming professional wrestling um, and the way I took it is, is to consume it. You know, if I'm consuming it on a weekly basis to get the backstage stories, to get everything, to follow the stories, I think it's better to follow it at home. Do I prefer? And that, I love the live experience because we've experienced all of us have experienced, you know, it, it's things you can go back. It's those Rawls at Madison square garden. It's the ECW, ECW one, one night stand. stands. Um, it's those things. That double or out. nothing 2019. I mean, there's so yeah. many the fucking first double or nothing in Jacksonville after the pandemic, after the, pandemic. the first pandemic. crowd. I mean, moments that makes the fucking hairs on your arms stand up. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I liken those to, to seeing your favorite band live, the energy. Um, now on the flip side of that, I will say I've had terrible experiences watching wrestling live too. Um, when it came to TNA in Florida, I 100% would have rather watched the product on television than actually going to the soundstage and watching them film it. Um, it, it was just an absolute clusterfuck and you had no idea <laughs> what was going on, what segment they were filming, what they were even trying to do. It was cool to go and see the wrestlers live, but Jesus Christ, if you're trying to figure out what the fuck's happening, <laughs> you, know, no you, you can't do it because they're piecing uh, that shit together in the editing room. Yeah. That's everything. TNA 2008, 2009 garbage live. Um, but you know, for 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 me, I would say, um, I, I I would have to just pick at home for the just the the simple fact of following along with story. Now you guys, uh, all said it. We love the live event. This is a very tough question. ECW, like we said, ECW one night stand, Madison Square Garden Rawls, um. D WCW house shows in the early nineties. Yeah. So many memories in my head. WCW sold out that we went to here. So many big memories. Um, I think the live experience is the number one way to make a fan. Like if yeah. you want to, if you want someone to become a fan of pro wrestling, if you sit them down on your couch and turn on raw or dynamite, that's a hard sell, man. They they've seen it. You know, they flip through the channels. They've seen that they're not going to fully invest. If you take them to the spectacle of it all, someone is going to be blown away. My, my girlfriend took her to a live show and she was blown away and she is not a wrestling person at all. And she loved it. I mean, the loud music, the lights, the pyro, it's it's such a great time but for me at home because of one reason and that's commentary i'm a huge fan of the yeah. art of commentary i think commentary is one of the most underappreciated elements of the storytelling of pro wrestling it now if they had something where you could rent headphones at a live event and i could put them on and listen to Tony and JR and Taz and Excalibur call the matches while I'm there live. I I, I would love it. I, I would love, I would pay for that. I love that. the fucking commentary, man. I think it's, it's people. I think fans we've watched it so long and I think a lot of people do appreciate it, but there are fans out there that it kind of just becomes, it washes over you. You're just, you don't really take the time to be like, damn, there is really an art to this. Like the way they, hide mistakes in the ring the way they can take moments and twist them with their words i'm such a fan of just the art of commentary from bobby the brain yeah. gorilla monsoon jr and jerry uh so many great great moments 
we, when we think of those moments, what do we think about the call? Yeah. You know, you think of the call, the JR call, the, mm. the gorilla call. And when you're live, it, it, it was a battle for me when I was thinking of this question, it was, it was, there were one thing on either side that I was grappling with on the at home side commentary at the live side, the energy, it's the energy. It's all about yeah. the energy because you're not hearing the story. You're watching it in the ring. It's the fan response. It's the chance. It's the, it, it's like when Danielson and Adam Cole came out at all out and the crowd, I mean, it was like, it felt like the roof was going to blow off. It's very, very hard. I love going to live wrestling, but week to week, how I consume it, I prefer at home strictly for the commentary. I will say this. As soon as I get home, I always go back and watch it right away because I need to experience the commentary. I want to see the little nuances you might it's have missed. It's so different, too. The way they shoot it. Like, like, if you see it live and then see it shot, it's such yeah. a different feeling. It's a completely different way to consume. Sometimes like, you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit more live. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Spend your disbelief a little bit more when you're there live. Like I'll give you like a quick example. When I went home and I watched it right away, first thing I do is I'm watching the trios match with the elite versus the death triangle. And I, I did not realize live that they had used a hammer to win. Like you oh, missed yeah. that little nuance. They're not yeah. going back to a replay there. So first thing I do is I'm, I'm texting uh, Matt and stuff. I'm like, did you realize he used a hammer to win? Like I totally missed that live. So and because the camera gets in those little little yeah. details that yeah. that you don't see live. So so like I love being there live, but again, like I'll watch it right away as soon as I get home because I need to consume it with the announcement. Like you said, I need all the little nuances. I need the backstage vignettes that you might have missed when you were there. So yeah. what I have a question. What oh, go ahead, Austin. No, I'm just uh, I I go back to I mean you guys are so good at swaying like my thought process. <laughs> Chad can make you believe anything. That I know. Fucking guy. Like, yeah, but I just there's so many like pros to to both. I mean, it's it's nice to have that option, like to to be yeah. able to consume it live and and to be able to consume it in person. Like I just lean back on the like all the little nuances, like you guys said, and I'm a huge like networking type person so i love talking to people in the arena like i love bullshit yeah. like, oh yeah in the line so i that camaraderie piece of like we're all here to like just, that's a huge piece man yeah so let me tell you I mean, this I guy just, he can talk to anyone because i was with him for a couple of days and everywhere he, we were he was stopping talking to people it didn't matter that's a sign he of a like, good I'm coach like, man that's yeah. that's that coach in you dude you can just talk up anybody i love it yeah yeah so i do have a so let we all have said we love our live events. So let me ask a question. What is your favorite moment you've ever experienced live? I don't mind. I'm going to go back to the little 10 year old OG kid being at a MSG with Mr. T hopping the rail, uh, watching a uh, Piper versus Hogan. Like I still have memories of thinking back to that. My dad taking me there. The garden was just the loudest crowd. I think I've ever heard for a wrestling event till this day. Like that was a rabbit cried, but like it's not the same crowd you see in WWE now that they used to get back in the eighties. That to me, that's like I'll I'll never forget that moment. That was the start of my fandom back then. So, man, that's tough, man. There's like three. <clears throat> there's like three that instantly pop in my mind. Um, House show WCW early nineties. It, it was in the lead up to Wrestle War, so they were doing cage match scenarios with with different variations of stinger squadron against the dangerous Alliance, I'm a huge dangerous Alliance mark. Um, but that's so long ago that it doesn't, it, the energy isn't there as much as the more recent ones. So like the more recent ones, Cena throwing his shirt back into the crowd at the Hammerstein at ECW one night stand. And the crowd keeps throwing it back. Oh. That was a fucking awesome moment. Yeah. And um, Moxley debuting at Double or Nothing 2019. I, I mean, it was like pandemonium, man. I, and Adam Cole and Danielson was great too. But something about Moxley coming through that crowd, man. It, it and well, fuck the, the 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 Dustin Cody match was. People were crying in the stands. That was an incredible moment. There, there's been several. Well, I mean, we looked at each other and said, 
well, I guess Mox isn't here. Yeah, we'd given up. Like, because end of the show, we're like, well, I guess Mox isn't coming. And then, boom, there he was. We're like, ah. Yeah, it was great. Like, and Mox, it wasn't a known thing that it was going to happen. Where right? I felt like Danielson, yeah, dude, yeah, but Danielson and 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 Cole, we pretty much knew they were appearing. It was just a matter of when. Yeah, we so didn't I know guess. they were both going to be there. Yeah, so, so the when you know someone's going to show up eventually, it's not as special as Mox. Wow, he's actually here. So I mean, Punk, you were there for Punk in Chicago. That was a. As far as watching it at home, that was one of the fucking biggest moments I've ever watched. That oh, crowd was losing their mind. Yeah. I was legit at shows from home, like legit, because I'm a huge Sam Punk Mark. I mean, that was crazy, that was man. Wild. I got to, I got That'd to be my number two. Moment of it all. Yeah. That, that would be my number two. That was crazy to be there for that. Thanks to Bellcaster for talking me <laughs> into going out there. What's yeah. yours, Snead? So I, I think mine, my number one live moment, you know, it, it was, and I, it, it's for a, a couple of different reasons, but man, being in Jacksonville for double or nothing and seeing Hangman come out and the yeah, crowd man. just, you know, the, the first live crowd back and we're all packed in there just screaming wrestling fans after being locked away for what a year, a or year more, a year more, or more. Than, more than a year. Yeah. yeah. Um, that just, just him standing there and looking around at everybody losing their shit. Like it gives me chills no, right now. Yeah. And that moment that what made that moment, but I totally forgot about that, but you're so spot on. What made that moment special was the moment felt bigger than wrestling. Yeah. It felt like, Man, we've been they've they've kept us apart for almost two years and now we're all back together and you could feel it in the place. Like people oh, wanted yeah. to fucking unload. Yeah, that, that was a special moment. You can see it fucking puts tears in my eyes now. Man. Yeah, yeah, it was fucking special. crazy. It was super yeah. special. Yeah. For me, mine, I mean, I kind of alluded to it earlier, but I, I think of where I was currently at in my life. That was back in like 2016 or 2017. So I'm a college student, right? I'm dirt poor. Like me and my like three best friends were like, let's just go get nosebleed seats. And like to for us to like be able to just pay that. And then we get the luck of the draw of getting second row seats, getting to take home a pay-per-view chair, like and the the memories we shared, like my friends, well, my one buddy was <clears throat> was not a wrestling fan at all, and he is now a huge mark, right? He is That's a awesome. Yeah, he's a big time fan, and like I just remember um, the show going off the air. That's when Jericho was still with the, uh, or was still with WWE, and Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns was the main event uh, for the Universal Championship, and that's when the they were Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho were big buddies, right? Oh and yeah. Were Reigns, we were right behind the Spanish announce table to end the pay per view. They uh, slammed Jericho. Reigns uh, power bombed him through the table. So that's just that's just a special memory. And I think, because I, I was at a lot of shows like with my parents and stuff and pay-per-views, but the element of surprise to that one where we're expecting to be in literally the last row of the damn arena, yeah. like the really tippy top to go from the tippy top, the whole way down to row two on the floor, like was, and that was the closest at the time I've ever sat like for a show. So I was just in awe. So I, would, I would love, I would pay money to see you and your friends' faces when you realize they're t- they're upgrading <laughs> you. To- I bet you guys were losing your mind. Well, I was losing my shit because our ticket wouldn't scan. I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, Let's go to the box office. So I'm like losing my shit as we're walking to the box office. And they're like, uh, yeah, you're, uh, I think they said a camera angle or something. Uh, yeah. They're using it for like the pan out of the arena. Like that's how far back we were they're using it for the pan out of the arena and then so we get our tickets and it says floor and i'm like hmm then i look over to the right side of the ticket and it says row b i'm like are you serious and then (laughs) we like get down there and like the 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 chairs are zip tied together i'm like holy cow we're gonna take these home so i still have the chair it's like right here behind me so i have the ticket stamped on it and everything it's just a special memory even though it wasn't the greatest pay-per-view i just it's the, the memory experience of yeah. being that close. Like I'll, I'll never yeah. forget that for the rest of my life. So, and now you have a friend that's a Mark, you know, that's a big wrestling fan. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that. 
to be able to turn someone into a fan that, yeah. that to be there for it. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I messed up. I messed up, man. My, I, my, I took my girl, she's not a fan. And I, my, the first event that I took her to was in a, a, a national guard armory. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. And it was, and it was to see the Briscoes versus, uh, um, outrunners <laughs> yeah so you got Mine Mark was, in there just screaming and bloody and it's just like <laughs> you gotta take her to so you gotta take her to like a big yeah spectacle you gotta take it to a ROH view. final battle during COVID so we had to sit in pods so we went to <laughs> ROH and final battle and she loves it now like she's not a like a watch it every week but she is the biggest MJF Mark she will hear because I blast the surround sound down here Show me yeah. MJF's spiel and literally run downstairs. Like that's how, <laughs> that's awesome. like, she went from watching an ROH pay per view to now being a huge MJF mark because he's such an asshole. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Good times. All right, guys. Any final thoughts before we move on to our final topic? Nope. All right. I, I love them both, man. I love yeah, them both. I love Live and at home. You got to have both. Yep. Great. All right. Final topic of the evening. What gets a wrestler over more, a five-star match or a fire promo? Wow. Fire promo. Fire promo. I and and there's, you know, I, I love wrestling. I love a good five-star match. Um, and you can go in there and you can have a seven-star match, but if you grab that microphone and you can't talk, I'm out. Exactly. If you, can't tell, if you can't tell me a fucking story after you go in there and do it. I'm out and, and, and it's taking nothing away from the match, man. Um, but I just think a fire promo goes way more in getting a wrestler over. I'm with you. It, it pulls fire, you into the story. Fire promo is the, tr is the thing that make that transcends someone to the next level. You can be great. And I mean, Kenny Omega, people say he can't deliver a promo. He's a five star match type of guy. I think his promos are underrated when he was with callous man. Yeah. He was fucking popping me every week when he had evil Uno in the ring and he asked him the question, what's the capital of Singapore? And he says, yeah. Bangkok and kicks him in the nuts. I love shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I love five-star matches. I think that gets the, that gets your respect when you've got guys who churn out like the Danielson's, that gets you on people's radars, but I think the true, okay, this guy's going to be a transcendent star. I think it's the fire promo. There is nothing that Ricky Starks could have done in his ring that could have captivated oh. me like his promo last week after winning to fight for the, for the dynamite diamond yeah. ring. That that's the perfect example right there. Like, but you know what makes that promo even better when it leads to a five star match. But the promo is what pulls you in. It's what brings you. It makes you have the attachment to the story to the wrestler. It's what gives you your favorite characters. You know, it, it's all yeah. about the promos. If you can't deliver a promo, what good are you? Like, like sure you go have a five star match, but Ricky Steamboat versus uh, Randy Savage at WrestleMania three five star match. But their build up leading up to it, it's the whole story there. Like like that. It, imagine imagine Steamboat if he had MJF's promo ability. Yeah, like he's respected. We all love Steamboat. Yeah. I love Steamboat, and he was the perennial baby face. But yep. like I feel like man carried that. It holds you back when you don't have yeah. the stick work. Yeah, it really yeah. does. And Ricky Starks uh, is proving it right now. Yeah, and I agree. It's it's definitely promo, and that's why we like we all like love wrestling. And it's it's great, but we love the characters. That's why, like, just think of if we watched wrestling without any sort of backstory, it would be the most boring shit ever. Yeah, realistically, because if you think about it, there are so many like what I I think I mean there's so many talented wrestlers. So you could argue like anytime Kenny Omega. Now, granted, it's not a five star match every time. It's all based off of preference. But a guy like Kenny Omega, I mean, you have the the uh the best of seven series going on right now i mean these are banger matches every week and they'll end up getting like you'll talk about the best of seven series but actually what gets someone over is those fire promos and those fire promos end up leading to the five star or five star matches yep. so it's definitely the promo and 
you remember that stuff. Like there's so much wrestling content out there. I couldn't even tell you the dynamite main event. Okay. Probably I could. I don't, actually, I don't even know. I probably couldn't even tell you the dynamite main event like two weeks ago. So what you do remember is though, you do remember the promos. Moments. Yep. You and remember the, the moments. You remember like spots from a match, but you don't like actually getting someone over and elevating them to have five star matches and putting them into that main event scene. The promo is what elevates them. So now, after last week, Tony Khan should be like, shit, we need to push this Ricky Starks kid and this MJF feud a little longer because he absolutely, I think, was the first person to truly outshine and kind of stand up MJF on the mic. And that's awesome. We need that. That's great. So I, the yeah. promo, man, that's what you live for. Like, that's that's wrestling. Yeah. I so. mean, look, MJF is one of the most over wrestlers in the world. How often does he wrestle? Rarely. He's Rare. legit Rare, Piper. Back in the 80s, Piper barely ever wrestled. He only wrestled when he had to, and, and MJF is following that same footprint, which makes it more special when he does get in the ring. So. I, you know, we're, we're doing this debate topic where you have to pick one or the other, but if you're really, really talking about what gets the wrestler over, it's the package of the two. Yeah create it but to me it's the big it's the transcendent story and any transcendent story that's great has within it the fire promos on the way to an iconic match i mean that that's really where you really get a get to be a made man like rock austin and the rock you know, the lead up to those matches and the promos back and forth. And then the match mania just kills it. I feel like it's that it, Bret Hart and Stone Cold in the I quit match. Uh, not the I quit match. The uh, the WrestleMania 13, right? Blood, yeah. the, the mm -hmm. double turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, shit like that. That's what makes it great is, is the combo of the two. But I will say... There is recently ROH Briscoe's FTR that dog collar match. When there's a match like that, did we get all of these promos on dynamite between these two teams? No. We literally got the week before the, 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 the ass boys pull out the, the letter and it's from Dem boys and that's all we needed, but there was like the history of the story and the promos on social media back and forth. But that's, that's the type of match where you could make an argument like, man, when you give me a match like that, both of those teams, no one, no one came away from that weaker. That was a fucking incredible match. Absolutely. I just think that, that instance is a lot more rare. It is. It yeah. is. It Plus, is, they yeah. had history. It was a trilogy match. There was history yeah, there. We've known what they've done together. Like, we've seen the first two matches. They were both amazing matches. So now you're putting them in a double dog collar match. Like, everybody just started jeweling as soon as you heard it. But I'm thinking more and more about, about Omega, man. He cut some fiery, awesome promos leading up to his match with Hangman. And he doesn't get enough credit. He had that one with them, the contract signing. And like you could feel that one when he was sitting at the table across the table from him. And Callus was disguised as the, the cameraman. cameraman. Exactly. Like he's had some amazing yep. promos. Like if you don't think Omega is good on the mic, then go watch something else because he, he could cut a friggin' promo when he needs to. And you could feel he's it. He got makes his own feel vibe. It. Yeah, he's got yes, his own little vibe to him. I but like it's it. Different. Not everybody should be the same. It's boring if everybody's the same. Yeah. Since we're singling out guys, one guy that everyone loves, one of the, not everyone, but a lot of people, one of the biggest stories in wrestling right now, Roman Reigns. What, why is he so over right now? Like in, in your guys' opinions, we're talking about five-star matches and fire promos. I think this is a hot take. I don't think this guy has five-star matches or fire promos, but he, I'm he's, the most over guy in wrestling right now. Why is that? I think it's I the think way he's carrying himself. I think it's confidence. I, yeah, I think it's arrogance. confidence, but I think it stems a lot from the crowd. When he was a baby face, the crowd hated him so much. And then when he came in and leaned into that heel role, I think people just 
instantly gravitated towards what he was doing. I think it's the overall story too. It's one of those rare occasions where the, the long-term story of it all is so compelling that you yeah. don't need to hang your hat on a five-star match or a fire promo. It's the week to week piece by piece epic storytelling they're doing as a whole that's yeah. making that's elevating him to this like godlike level. And you gotta I, give him credit because like I said, he was hated before he came back, you know, after he missed WrestleMania during COVID and he took that time off. They found something that worked for him because like you said, he he didn't have the promos and he, he's not Kenny Omega in the ring, but the arrogance, the way he carries himself, that's what's working for him. And with the whole story, it's gelling to be a really a good story that's actually something different. Like, is it the five? No, it's actually the story for him that's actually gotten him over. You know, know what they found, Tom? They found what the fans were fucking screaming from the rafters for five years. Yeah. Turn this dude heel. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's what they, they, they listened to the fans. Yeah. Like, people hated this guy, and we were just like, please let him be a bad guy. Yeah. And I know, like I've said this before, that character was built from a little Instagram live he did during the pandemic where he was just walking around his neighborhood. And he's like, you, you guys are out there criticizing me and you don't know my story. It was it turned into what this character is. I swear somebody at WWE saw it and said, that's the Roman. Oh, Heyman. Have to go with. Yeah, the, 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 Heyman this, all day. this has Heyman all over it. Like I the, wish we could go back. I wish I could go back and find that Instagram live. I wonder if it's posted anywhere. I'm it's sure got to be somewhere. Bad. The internet, yeah. everything lives forever. Yeah. You know, and he, when he came back, it still, you know, as, as a heel and everybody was into it, the only thing I could I could look at was those damn teeth. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Those chicklets, the those new chicklets, yeah. The new, just shiny white teeth. What do you think, Austin? Like, what what is what's made Reigns what he is? I... I mean, I think absence, right, makes the heart grow fonder, and especially absence with a change from being that face to the bad guy. But I just remember the one promo he cut. I think it was leading up to one of the manias. Um, I think the one in Tampa. But he was like, "This is my ring." Like this, like getting into the camera. He's like, "This is my microphone," and like just that whole confidence factor. Because you could tell, like, um, I was at the uh, the Rumble where he won it. In Pittsburgh in 2014, and yeah. no one won, or no, no, was that Batista or something? I think that was the year everyone wanted him to win it or something. But again, like he was just so cookie cutter that people, fans were seeing it. That's not the real him. I think he's now found that comfort zone where you can see the confidence, like that promo, like where he gets close up to the camera and he's like, "This is my ring. Like this is this is my mic. Like that yep. is." a comfort zone for him. And it's not like he's doing these long wordy promos like at all. Yeah. It's a belief. I believe him now. Like I, when he's speaking that confidence transcends through my TV screen and I'm buying what he's putting down. Like, I'm like, this guy believes his shit. You know, he's, he's, he's believing in himself where before he felt like he was playing a character. Yeah. Where now I feel like him. We've preached that time and time again. A character is so much better when it's an extension of you. And that's yeah. just what they found here, and that's why it's working. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I think this is a good point to wrap it yeah. up. Anybody have any great final show. thoughts before we do that? No, great show. Great topics. Yeah, this These was a topics lot of fun. Were, were better than I even expected them to be. Well, they were yeah. awesome topics. Even the one Austin brought. Like that, I, I loved it when I saw I the topics in our chat. Man, I spent more time on that topic than I, I think I did any other one. That, that was just, <laughs> yeah. It was so hard for me. Yeah. Man, Austin, tell everybody where they can find you. All right. At Rest Central, W-R-E-S-C-N-T-R-A-L. I think I spelled that right. On Twitter, I'll be back in the saddle live tweeting again. Um, I know with football, it was kind of hectic. But, yeah, I'll be uh, watching Dynamite tonight, and I might be uh, – Tom asked me to join the wrap up, so I might be on that as well. Dude, do it. Jump Get in, on man. There, man. Jump in. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and cool. don't forget, you can watch all of our shows streaming right on uh, Boston's Twitter. So, yeah. yeah, it's at Rest Central. We're we're over there anytime we're streaming. It streams there as well. So definitely go check it out. And yeah, shout out to my boy Tyson. Yeah, <laughs> Austin <Awesome>, Tyson. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> 
All right, guys, that's going to wrap us up for this edition of the Turnbuckle Debate. Make sure you guys are following the TurnbuckleTavern.com for all of your tavern needs. Tom, we didn't have you here last week. Go ahead and get your shit in this week. Joe G, Fit Kid, Twitter and Instagram, uh, Turnbuckle Sessions every Wednesday and Fig Night Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Awesome. Court is dismissed. <laughs>